Hi, welcome to the Shepherd's Rest Dog Talk. This is episode 37A. I'm Cam and this is Julie. We are outside in the beautiful sunlight today. So this week we're beginning the new chapter, our new book of um, Leviticus. Leviticus, which is also by known by Ikra. Um, we are from Exod well, Exodus, Leviticus 1 to 6. Um, and basically, it's instructions of how to be holy. If you think about it, we ended Exodus with the tabernacle was built, and the clouds come down, and the fire's there, and they're ready to go in, but they can't. It's so heavy. It's everything that was on Mount Sinai, that whole thing is now compacted into, into the tabernacle, into the tabernacle the holy, which is a much huh? smaller spot, okay? So they can't enter in. The point is, it's now time to be holy. Leviticus is all a book about how to be set apart, how to be holy. And it's giving some real um, detailed aspects that have to do with the offerings. Um, and I think I, that's important what you said. It's a matter of being set apart. Absolutely. Not holy like we've made it holy. but Right. Not the way apart. man, not man made holy, but God's made holy. Okay. Right. And we see here details that so often in our Greek mindset, we just, uh, it's not even important. Right. Because there's no temple. Who cares? But remember, we are charged to guard the commandments. That's right. And keep them. The ones that we cannot practice, that's okay. You still guard them. You still acknowledge that they are significant and that they are important and that they have value, the value that the Lord's placed on them, not the value that man's placed on them. Right. So what we see here is before Moses, or Moses is called, and he's called, he's given the instructions of when any man wants to come. And that's Leviticus 1, 2. He says, when any man wants to come, well, that man is not ish, it's not some of the other Hebrew words, it's Adam. And because we are all made in Adam's, Adam's likeness, image. okay? Yeah. So this also says it's not man as in male. Right. It is mankind. Male, female, whomever chooses to draw near to God, this is how you do it. And he gives details because they are significant to him. It's, it's that whole idea of being married, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, I think I said this last week. Look, part of our job after that first breaking, okay, the covenant, then the new one is learning how to be a good wife. We don't know how to be a good wife. True. He's teaching us how. And in this, he's given step by step, very detailed things. Another reason is so that there can never be an idea of, um, well, we'll just do it the way I want to do it. Or mm -hmm. you'll do it your way, I'll do it my way. And, you know, no, he says, mm -mm, you're going to do it the way I, I want it. It's also to help to distinguish between what was happening with the pagan gods and what's happening with him. The relationship of offering, because sacrifices and offerings, that wasn't a new concept. I mean, they, they all the pagan um, religions use that. Right, right. But even we see where he says, do not put honey, do not uh, put leaven in mm -hmm. the offering, don't burn them. Because that was a common practice among the pagan um, religions that they right. would do. Because see, honey was considered what? the food of the gods, mm. okay? And the idea there was you're giving them their honey. Well, the Lord's like, mm -mm, we don't even want to be confused because, see, this is not meant to be food for the gods. This isn't meant to be food for the Lord. It's not food. He doesn't need food. What are you kidding? Okay? Right. This has all to do with communing and relationship. We see this week we have four types of offerings. We have the olam, which is the to total the burnt offering. We have the shamim, which is the uh, peace offering. Mm -hmm. um, which is a communing. Then we have the sin offering, which is the uh, hatak. You can see how to say it or spell it down here. <laughs> and then you have we have the uh, the asham, which has to do with the guilt offering. Okay, of these, they're voluntary. Now there are two, I guess you'd say, mandatory: the sin and the guilt. But not not until you decide to give it is it mandatory. Does that make sense? Yes. It is a matter of the heart. We see this also in five, uh, chapter 5, that it's with confession. None of these things are supposed to happen without the confession of your heart. Right. Now, the Olam, that first one, is just, I just want to do it because I love you. So let's use Mark Belts's, um analogy of flowers. Mm -hmm. When you have a married couple and a spouse thinks on his way home from work, he says, you know what, I'm going to buy my wife some flowers. And he buys some flowers, and he comes home, and he gives it to her, and she's like, oh, they're beautiful. Thank oh, you. thank you. Ah, okay. Ooh, it's going to be a good night, right? All right. Just because you want to. It doesn't matter what you spent on it. It's a matter of the heart. We see that in chapter 1 and 2, because those who are very wealthy, they do the uh, bull. We see those who are pretty, you know, 
pretty well. They do of the flock. Then you see those who are struggling a little bit, they do of the birds. And then you have those who are struggling, literally struggling day to day to just even eat, and they give the grain offering. And of that, it even shows the different types because every person is supposed to be involved. So right. of the grain, you don't just give grain, you give grain that you've you've cooked or you put oil in or you've done something too. So you've been a part of the process. Because what we see in all these offerings is the person who brings it, okay? Mm -hmm. So I bring it, boom. That is going to be of my effort, all right? Um, I'm the one that brings it to the priest. This is for the Olam. So I would bring it to the priest. I would show him, this is my bull. Um, then you would actually, you would kill the bull, okay? Then the priest would come and collect the blood, and he would do his part on the altar. And then um, I would skin it, mm -hmm. and then I would cut it into pieces, and then I would give it to the priest then the priest will do the part that I can't do I've done everything to draw near and now he's going to be the one that presents me he's going to kind of be that in a way intermediate which is exactly what Yeshua is right he's, he's our high priest he's right our now. high priest he's the intermediate he's the one that goes into the holy of holies all right mm -hmm. so the olam is just because I want to so the flowers to your wife just because you love her all right the next one is uh the peace offering now, peace offering basically says, I want to have dinner. We're going to have a romantic dinner tonight, and this is what I'm making, honey. And so, he's like, oh, I'm going to get flowers. It'll make, just set the mood, right? Great atmosphere. And it's to commune. It's to enjoy it. You're both enjoying the flowers. You're both enjoying the dinner, okay? Um, and that's how that one is. So, let's say I would bring the offering, and then a part of the offering would go to the priest, a part of the offering would go on the altar. The table is considered the altar. And then the rest would come back to me, and the Brysons and the Sharps would have a party, okay? Right. And we would all yes, eat that would. together. <laughs> and that would be us being to, us being able to participate with the Lord at the table. Now, we couldn't go into the temple and eat it. That's not possible. But we can bring back to our house right. what is holy and been set apart and participate in, participate in it there. Right. Then we have, after that, we have the sin offering. Now it's the idea of, um, I've done something wrong. And we confess yeah. our sins. Right. So this week we see that there are different types of sin offerings. There's one for the high priest. When he has sinned, his sin will affect all of Israel. He's to take a bull, okay, and give, give that bull for the sin offering. The next one's for the nation, okay? The whole nation also has, for a sin that they didn't even know that they did, and they find out, and they're like, oh, that was wrong? <gasps> oh, then they can um, participate in that. We see that in Ezra, Nehemiah. We see that in uh, Chronicles. Right. Where you have Israel has gone so far away, then they find the Torah, and they come back, and they're like, oh, we're so sorry. And they even repent for what our fathers have done. That's right. We're sorry for what our fathers have done. Yes. Okay, and they <laughs> repent. He forgives that. He's not like, well, sorry. Mm -mm. Y'all did that on purpose. Well, yeah, but they didn't realize it was wrong. There's forgiveness for that. See, when we come to the truth, when we come to um, the Lord, it's all covered. Those things, you know, he says that he forgives what, uh, in Psalms, as far as the east is from the west. Right. Right? Those transgressions are done. Right. But, but again, we cannot just pick up and do it again. That's why he says, go and sin no more. Right? Mm -hmm. Don't. Don't sin. Go and keep doing what's right now that you know. Okay. Then we have, we see where a king, which I think is so interesting, because when he sins, okay, he is to bring a, a female goat. So what I think is interesting is, when he sins, everyone who sees him bringing a female goat knows. Hmm, <laughs> the king sinned. Happened. King sinned, okay. And then we also have individuals. And then they have can, to bring something, right. because that's a sin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just a big old circle. So then we see where we as individuals can also bring something. Now, let's go to the flower analogy, okay? Mm -hmm. So you and your wife, you had a fight, okay? The next day, you come up and you um, bring flowers or that night. I'm so sorry, honey. I'm sorry that I did this. I, I repent. I was wrong. Will you forgive me? And she takes the flowers and goes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Puts them up. And she, she sees them and they just remind her, God, he, you know, he, he's, he's sorry. sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's great. All right? It's repairing the relationship. Right. It's allowing um, us to draw near. And okay? the flowers are a reminder. Yes. And, and that you the flowers near. are nice and appreciated. But notice that a husband can still ask forgiveness and be forgiven, or wife, I mean, no gender, just female, so, you know, um, without bringing flowers. 
Yes. So once the temple was gone, it wasn't like, well, we we have no way to be no forgiven. forgiveness. No. Right. It's just it kind of sweetened the deal. All right. And you know, when you understand the flower analogy, you understand what Paul was speaking of when he said bulls and goats never covered sin. Right. And we're like, see, sacrifices were never really what God wanted. Of course not. Of course they weren't. That was just a matter of the heart. It right. was an outward expression of an inward and we know in Psalms, it's 50 or 51, uh, where he says, look, all he wants is a, contri a broken heart and a contrite right. spirit. But after that, Bring he wants the sacrifices. offerings and sacrifices. Right. It's the sacrifices right. without the inward change that are just useless. And he it's says he doesn't, the outside. he doesn't even want them. He says, um, you know, without that, I don't want I don't they want stink. your stinking offerings. They stink. That's right. But otherwise, it's sweet fragrance. Well, then people go, oh, so he thinks that burning bull is sweet fragrance? Yes, because it's the obedience. And I believe it's uh, 1 Samuel that says obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. But see, when we're obedient, we will do the offerings. Right. Because we want to. I mean, even Yeshua, I believe it's in Psalms 40 where he says, you know, the volume of the book is written about me. He says, you don't want the bulls. You don't want the goats. You don't want all this. You want what you want it to be on my heart and my heart is to do the will of my father now because of that i will and what does he do he is the sacrifice every right. single thing that we read this week yeshua was he was the burnt offering fully given right they it was they, the peace offering yeah and the skin of that they they skin it and then that goes to the priest or you know whoever's doing the offering okay well look when yeshua is on the cross what happened his clothes they took them yeah just like that skin Okay, we see in the um, off, we also see where we have the um, minka, which is considered, is that was a bug that just went in front of the camera. The minka, which is the grain offering, that's also for the olam. Okay, it's broken. Mm -hmm. It all that is unleavened, all the things that Yeshua is that we see in Passover, it, that's there too. Another place that we see the significance of understanding what's happening with all the offerings and sacrifices is in Isaiah 52, at the end of it. We see that Yeshua was not recognizable. That's just like these offerings. See, they're cut in pieces and they're, they're put in certain places. No bones are broken, though. Right. But when they're set in certain pieces, it's like, what is that? What? Mm -hmm. I can't tell if that was a goat or a, a calf. or you, know, you can't tell. Well, see, Yeshua was beyond recognition as well. Okay, I mean, obviously, he knew he was human, but you couldn't see because he was beaten. He was, you know, and those are the things that happen also with the um, minka, the bread offering, okay, the grain offering. You see those things. This is an interesting little tidbit. They say that when the priests were given the unleavened cakes, that they would break mm -hmm. it, okay, yeah. but before they would break it, they would put oil on it. Which it talks about bringing like oil. anointing it. Yes, and when they anointed, it, they would do it in the ancient Hebrew te uh, letter of Tav, which is the sign of a cross. What not does that not mean? a perfect cross, but it looks more like an X. And Tav means the covenant. Mm -hmm. So here we have. Oh, so the they pour the oil. And they would like do that. The, well, they would do their finger and anoint it, oh. and they would do it in the Tav. Gotcha. Neat. Isn't that neat? Yes. And it is. of course, we you know Yeshua is anointed. He anointed how by the finger of God. He was broken for us. I mean. It literally could be days and days and weeks of studying of the significance of, of the all sacrifices. these things. And we just go over them like it's no big deal. But right. if they are huge. They are huge deals. Galatians, we see where it talks about the Torah being a tutor to us. And that's what this is. This is a tutor to us to give us the understanding of, look, we are to be, as again Paul said in both of those, we are to be a living sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. And the Torah is a tutor of how to do that successfully, all right? right? And all these things, giving ourselves wholly to the Lord, um, wanting to commune with the Lord, um, but, uh, coming before Him boldly and confessing our sins, and being able to take care of our brothers the way we should when we've wronged them, mm -hmm. all right? All these things are examples. We all, you want to say something? Yeah, it also teaches us a, a lot about God's character. His oh. expectations yeah. and what he desires from us and the Holy Spirit will help us to translate that into what it would look like today. Yeah. And I just want to say that if we think that it's not important what we do today, go read Revelation 2 and 3. Every promise and consequence to the churches would be was because of something Actions. they did That's or they true. did not do. That's true. So 
it is vital and it is important. We're not this. They've already crossed the Red Sea. They've already been right. This is they've for already his been saved from right. Egypt. Yeah. We've already been saved from, but they still died in the wilderness because they were not obedient. Why do we think we're going to be any different yeah. than they were? Not being us in our disobedience, right? Because the idea, you know. The idea is that we have eternal salvation. It's the second death we don't have to worry about. We still right. have to deal with the things on earth. We still have to walk according to His, and that will determine what what it looks like. What it looks like in the millennium yes. and and beyond. And beyond, yeah, exactly. Well, that's all we have. Thank you so much for your patience. This was probably the most trying, hardest week to get this uh, recording done between yes. the weather the and, and every other possible thing you can think of has happened in the last two hours. So, <laughs> y'all have a great day. Thanks so much for joining us, and we do hope that you at least get a nugget or two out of this week's tour portion. Yes. We will see you on the flip side with the Brit Hadashah and Julie. Have a great week. Shalom. Shalom.